All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this village board meeting to order on Monday, March 21, 2022, and ask if you would all please rise and join the village board in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Baldino? Here. Trustee Canty? Here. Trustee Bertucci? Here. Trustee Labeds? Here. Trustee Schwingbeck? Here. Trustee Grassi? Here. Trustee Tenalia? Here. Trustee Scaletta? Here. President Hayes? Here. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes, and we've got three sets to approve tonight. The first is from the Committee of the Whole Meeting from March 7, 2022. Are there any changes or passes? Move approval. Second. Motion to approve by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Labeds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next are the village board meeting minutes from that same evening. Is there any, are there any changes or passes? Move approval. Second. second. Motion to approve by Trustee Labeds, seconded by Trustee Schwingbeck. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And then finally, the minutes from the committee of the whole meeting on March 14, 2022. Any changes or passes? Move approval. Second. Motion to approve by Trustee Baldino, seconded by Trustee Grassi. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And uh, next is the approval of the accounts payable, and I call on Trustee Bertucci. Move approval of the warrant register for the check date March 15, 2022, in the amount of $1,445,275.85. Second. Motion by Trustee Bertucci, seconded by Trustee Canty. Any questions or comments from the board or from the audience? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Bertucci? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Grassi? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Well, next under recognitions and presentations, uh, we do have a present uh, proclamation to read tonight, and that is in recognition of Women's History Month uh, for the month of March 2022. We have been um, recognizing this particular month throughout the month of March here in Village Hall through a number of different activities. And so let me just memorialize uh, what we've been doing for the past three weeks or so by reading this proclamation. This is the Village of Arlington Heights Proclamation recognizing Women's History Month. Whereas, after being petitioned by the National Women's History Project, Congress passed a resolution designating the month of March 1987 as the first National Women's History Month. Whereas, the purpose of Women's History Month is to celebrate the vital contributions women have made to the United States and to recognize the special and specific achievements women have made over the course of American history in a variety of different fields. And whereas women from every walk of life have made possible the growth and strength of our country in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas the diverse women in our community play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of life. And whereas the Village of Arlington Heights pays tribute to the women on our staff who serve as leaders in the community on a daily basis across all of our departments. And whereas the village also recognizes and applauds the women who serve on the front lines of our public safety departments, including the police, fire, and public works departments. And whereas in honoring the 35th National International Women's Month, we support the 2022 theme of providing healing, promoting hope a tribute to the ceaseless work of caregivers and frontline workers during the ongoing pandemic and also in recognition of the thousands of ways that women of all cultures have provided both healing and hope throughout history. Now, therefore, um, I, Thomas W. Hayes, along with the Village Board of Trustees, uh, again, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2022 as National Women's History Month here in the Village of Arlington Heights. If there being no other recognitions or proclamations, we'll move on to citizens to be heard. 
And I have no uh, blue cards for items not on the agenda. We do have one individual who apparently wishes to speak. Melissa, go ahead. Melissa Kerr speaking. Um, on the uh, property tax 2021 first installment Cook County property tax bill due March 1st, 2022, on uh, percent of pension and health care costs taxing districts can pay, it has 0.00% for Harper College Community College 512 Palatine. Please do not refer any students to Harper Community College until they fix that problem. I don't know if you noticed that on the property tax bill. Okay. Thanks, Melissa. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the board on an item not on the agenda? All right, seeing none, we would then move on to old business. And we do have some items to report out this evening. And I would uh, call first on Trustee Schwingbeck. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would move, that, uh, as I did on March 14th, to approve the proposed 2021 general fund surplus transfers and to amend the 2021 and 2022 budgets to reflect these transfers. Second. Motion by Trustee Schwingbeck, seconded by Trustee Baldino. Questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience on this? Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if I could characterize it as a windfall, but certainly uh, very good news that we had a $7.5 million approximately surplus in the general fund budget. And through uh, the careful thought and analysis of uh, our village staff, including our finance director, Tom Keeney, and village manager, Randy Recklaus, and other department heads, um, they came up with a plan to uh, divvy that money up in a very fiscally prudent way. And so we very much appreciate their efforts in doing that. So with that, I would uh, ask for a vote. And uh, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have one other item to report out this evening. Uh, that was from our motion, uh, or from our meeting from earlier tonight. And I would call on Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Mayor. I would move now, as I did earlier this evening, um, that the Village Board of Trustees recommend to the Liquor Commissioner the issuance of a Class AA liquor license to Honey Jam Cafe, LLC, doing business as Honey Jam Cafe, located at 2944 West Euclid Avenue, upon surrender of the existing license issued to that address. Second. Motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Canty. Any questions or comments from the Board? Anything from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, congratulations, Caroline, where are you at? Thank you. Thank you for uh, flying to Chicago, and uh, we wish you continued uh, success here in the Village of Arlington Heights. There is no other new business, and so we move on then to the consent agenda. Are there any members of the board who wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Any members of the audience wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, the, the, the marijuana cannabis shops, I, I, I don't think we should have them for people. Wait, let's go ahead and uh, are you asking that the item be removed for discussion? We do need to remove it for discussion purposes. So. Okay, then, yeah, then we'll. Okay, so we'll remove, uh, and that is legal D, so the ordinance extending the adult use cannabis um, dispensing organization pilot program shall be removed. Any other members of the audience wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Seeing none, uh, since the cannabis item has been removed, we'll take that up under legal. Are there any members of the board who wish to vote no or pass on any remaining items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the remaining items. So move approval. Second. Motion to approve by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Tenalia. Roll call. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Bertucci? Yes. Trustee Labedz? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Grassi? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Can I have a motion to take the, uh, the, item, the legal item uh, that was just removed out of order? I would move that we move consent legal D um, forward in the agenda to this time. Second. Motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Labeds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, let's take up that item. Uh, Ms. McCullough, can you just give us a brief summary of, of why this is on the agenda tonight? Sure. The attached ordinance extends the cannabis pilot program um, set to expire on March 31st to June 30th. So the extension will allow staff to draft an updated ordinance based upon direction given by the village board at the February 21st meeting. So um, as changes to the zoning code will be required, uh, the plan commission will also need to review that. So, and it will be coming back to the board um, for a final vote. Thank you. Sir, why don't you come forward now and identify yourself and, um, and make your comments at this time. I'm Ronald Stolberg. I'm a resident here in Arlington Heights. And I, cannabis is still federally illegal. So we could all, the whole state could be in big trouble for being drug dealers and making money off of selling drugs. And I think as far as medically, I'm okay with that because it's controlled. There's only a, there's a limit on how much a person can get. And there's a doctor who is supposed to be responsible for that. With it out of, with it with the cannabis just for recreation purposes, they can go there every single day and get what a person would normally use in a week, or they could even go there twice a day and they could just keep getting as much as they can afford. And I just don't think this is healthy for the people, and there may be health problems that the community has to address and has to subsidize. Okay, thank, thank you. you, sir. Any other comments from the audience? Anything else from the board? Is there a motion? Oh, sir, why don't you come forward? Just identify yourself by your name, if you would. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know where to put the blue card. My name okay. is Mark Skirkowitz. I'm a resident here in Arlington Heights. And I'd like to uh, speak in favor of the resolution. I think it's important that not only um, the village find creative ways to bring in tax revenue, obviously with losing uh, the racetrack, we're losing a large portion or a large tax base. Um, we've already looked at raising taxes on restaurants in the area. I, I mean, I'm surprised at, at that. We're looking at um, finding more aggressively um, our own citizens in the community for, for not buying um, you know, uh, stickers for their vehicles. And there's alternate ways we could go about doing this. There's other communities who have successfully implemented marijuana dispensary shops for adult use um, successfully, and they've, they've reaped the gains. Other communities around here continue to do that. For example, right over in Wheeling, they're making somewhere in the order of 17% of every single purchase is going into the coffers for Wheeling. So this is not a situation where it's illegal in Arlington Heights. It's not a situation where somebody couldn't travel across um, village lines in order to, um, to obtain the product that's, that's legal in the state. Um, I'd also like to um, comment on um, some of the flyers that have been going around. I'm sure that you guys have probably received several notices um, with some uh, misinformation or inaccurate information. It actually was um, the talking heads who said facts all come with a point of view, and you can really use statistics in order to spin any sort of uh, topic. So a lot of what we saw in those were either you know, rough correlations, it wasn't statistically significant, or the facts were just misrepresented on those flyers. So I think it's really important for us to take a look at what's valid for us here in Arlington Heights, what's important for us here in Arlington Heights, and I'd like to uh, challenge the board not only to extend the current um, um, uh, dispensary that's in the village, but also look at expanding it, because I think it's important that we um, come up with creative ways of bringing tax revenue into our community. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is if we look at the history of where we get the federal regulation for cannabis currently in this country, it is firmly rooted in um, some racism and some other, um, I don't want to say nefarious, but there were definitely some reasons why in 1937 it was deemed to be illegal and then reaffirmed as a class one drug in the 1970s. Once again, if you remember, a class one drug has no medical purposes, so the fact that um, there is Currently, um, allowance by doctors to use the product shows that there is medical benefit to it. Once again, a class one drug shows no medical benefits. I'd like to point out that heroin and cocaine are actually a lower class of drug. So we're saying that marijuana is more important or um, needs to be regulated at a higher rate than uh, heroin and cocaine. So once again, I'd like to encourage um, uh, Mayor Hayes and the board to think about what the, um, what the village needs to do in order to continue to bring in tax revenue. And once again, keep in mind uh, some, of the, uh, some of the other actions that we have. Mayor Hayes, I know you said you wanted to keep um, 
You had voted no previously because you wanted to keep um, Arlington Heights a family-friendly community. I don't think allowing uh, marijuana dispensaries is detracting from a family-friendly community. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You can give your blue card to our village clerk, uh, Becky Hume, over here. Over here. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the board on this item? Seeing none, coming back to the board for uh, comments or a motion, Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think that uh, out of all the people that received that uh, the second flyer, because there were two flyers that went out and were distributed to residents, um, that some people that I spoke with weren't aware that we had a dispensary in town. Started out as a recreational. Um, marijuana location and now it serves a dual purpose started out as Medi a medical I'm sorry medical sorry medical and now serves a dual purpose um, and then they you know didn't realize the significance um, of the the tax revenue so there was a lot of misinformation I think that's kind of just shared out within um, the community and because of the flyer I received more comments in support of um, us expanding or uh, continuing the pilot program, but expanding um, uh, recreational marijuana in the village. Um, so I, I think that the efforts um, by those who sent out the flyers to homes um, didn't necessarily work the way that they thought. Um, so just my okay. comments. Well, what we're contemplating here tonight is just a, an extension of the pilot program while the staff works on um, implementing more permanent or drafting more permanent ordinances that would relate to this issue. So, uh, and Diana, do you have any time frame when that might be coming back? Staff is still currently working on that. We should have an update for the board in terms of a timetable in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you. So I do need a motion. Trustee Canty. I would move to approve the extension of the pilot program currently in existence to, I believe, the date is June 30th, 2022. Second. Is that correct? Sorry, that's Hart, correct. That no, and that would be a motion to approve the ordinance. Yes. Ordinance. Ordinance. Okay. Consent legal D. Yeah, and to clarify the date again, it's June 30, 2022. 2022. Correct. correct. Okay. Okay. Motion by Trustee Canty, seconded Second. by Trustee Grassi. Any further questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And I will vote no. All right, that motion carries. And so we'll move on then to new business. And we do have two items to consider tonight. The first is a request for a special use permit for a daycare facility located at 1000 West Northwest Highway um, to be named Guidepost Montessori and also a land use vari variation to allow a daycare center within the R3 district and a land use variation to allow a private school in the B2 and R3 districts and also repeal of a special use permit. Ordinance 12-059 and other associated variations. So last to consider tonight is the petitioner present. Come forward if you would and identify yourself. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Diane Menza. I represent the petitioner, Olympia Acquisitions, LLC. Um, and I'm gonna tell you just briefly a highlight of what our plan of redevelopment is. I have with me our architect, Tom Siebert, and a representative from Guidepost Montessori to answer any questions you might have. Unfortunately, our traffic engineer couldn't make it, so if we have those questions, we're gonna to have to kind of work with you on that one. Um, our plan for redevelopment is to take a currently vacant 12,232 square foot. It's the second slide, Charles. Um, square foot There's building. There's a controller right uh, by I your right it? hand. Um, oh. If it doesn't work, I can advance it. So there you go. Thank you. I didn't know I had that much power. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a vacant masonry building. It's located at 1000 West Northwest Highway. Um, we want to turn it into a guide, guidepost Montessori daycare and private school. Um, what we're doing is expanding this building so that it, by about 1,000 plus square feet, so it'll be about 13,388 square feet. Um, we're putting a new roof on the building. We're doing new storefront windows and door systems. 
they'll replace all the existing openings we're taking the parking lot, which is kind of a mess, and not only resurfacing it, but we're adding landscape islands so that there'll be trees and landscaping within that parking lot. Also, the parking lot itself, and Tom's probably going to walk you through that on the landscape plan, will have three-foot-high bushes along Northwest Highway so that it's screened day one. They have to be planted at three feet. Um, we're taking the parking lot that's just to the north of the building by Carroll's. <laughs> by Carol's house and <laughs> and replacing it with a playground um, it will be completely fenced in and that's important because um, the children and staff have access directly from the building into this fen fenced in play lot area so they're never going to be out and exposed to any traffic or anything else um, the site plan landscaping plan and building elevations uh, went through many iterations, working with staff's recommendation. Tom will talk about that now. And if you have any questions on guidepost, I'll, I'll be coming up for the tuition slide. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello, uh, Tom Siebert from Seuss Associates Architects. Uh, let's see. This, these are some photos of the existing building as it stands right now with the very dark brick uh, with uh, black uh, slate, simulated slate shingles, all of which will be changing. Uh, we're going to be painting the very dark brick sort of a mid-range warm gray, and all of the exposed concrete block around the, the remaining sides, as well as our new addition, will be a lighter warm gray to uh, complement uh, the brick color. The, uh, the shed for the rooftop or, or the mechanical equipment back will be removed and uh, we will be replacing the slate shingles which are actually an asbestos containing material. It will be ab abated and we will have uh, residential style uh, shingles of a uh, weathered wood color which uh, it's kind of a grayish brown which will complement the rest of the building. The uh, roof will have a gray membrane as opposed to a white or a black to help it disappear into the background because we can't completely hide it uh, since it arches so high above the rest of the building. Uh, these are some elevations of what we plan on doing. I have to apologize, uh, the, the building won't be as tan as it shows here. We have a very challenging issue trying to get the proper rendering of the colors. But uh, it will be a warm gray for all of the, everything that looks vaguely yellow will be uh, a warm gray. And then the, uh, the darker walls will be the, the medium gray. We've got some gooseneck lights over the front elevation signage. Uh, the actual signage has to be developed yet. That'll be under a separate uh, permit for the building. And we also have some awnings on the, uh, the parking lot side above the windows to kind of carry that line across the building. Uh, we have some landscape. The only landscaping we have shown in this right now is a one tree near the entrance. That was to illustrate uh, a certain point. There's additional landscaping around the site. You'll see when we get to that. A few other shots of the elevations. We have a uh, four foot tall vinyl picket fence around the play areas. On the interior of the lot, we have six foot tall vinyl fence facing Kennecott, as well as six foot tall uh, non see through fencing along the property line with the residences, as well as around the garbage enclosure. And here we see some of the materials called out. I have to apologize, some of the text is not as legible as I'd like, but. Uh, essentially, it's all a warm gray shade of one or another, one shade or another. The fencing will be an almond color rather than a stark white. Uh, here we have the site plan along the, the Kennecott side. We have the six foot tall fencing. We've got some interior fencing separating the different age groups in the playground area from each other. That separating fence will be four foot tall with the ability to see through for staff to monitor your children and keep an eye on them. 
Uh, parking lot, as Diane mentioned, <coughs> is uh, going to be uh, resurfaced. We have parking islands at the ends of all the parking lanes. We have a small uh, trash area at the, the north end of the main parking lot there that will have residential style garbage bins in it and be completely fenced in. Um, we have 48 parking spaces, including two handicapped spaces next to the entrance. We have uh, rampage and doorways to accommodate for the accessible uh, entry to the building. Uh, the larger classrooms also have direct exterior exiting, which is a code requirement, and several of the younger children's classrooms also have direct exterior exiting because it's a good idea for the younger children. Uh, in some cases, they'll be exiting directly out into their own play area. Um, and that, this is just same site plan, just with the background removed. Uh, the, the oval in the play area is actually a hard paved surface that will be for tricycle uh, riding around the loop. The play structures will have a compacted uh, natural material that will have to be maintained, but it can be compacted to provide ADA access to all of the play structures. We also have some existing site drainage off at the north edge of the site that will be maintained by the landlord to make sure that none of the materials clog the drainage and cause any drainage issues. Uh, here we just show that we have clearances for fire truck access from either direction through the parking lot. The building has clear access on three of the four sides. Uh, to uh, deal with any fires that could potentially occur on the site. Here we have the landscape plan. The next page will have all the materials called out, but we have trees identified at the ends of each parking row, which is an ordinance requirement. We have uh, landscaping along the fencing facing Kennecott so that it softens up that line there. We also have landscaping along the front of the building, including as Diane mentioned, some three foot tall uh, bushes that they'll be three foot tall at time of installation along Northwest Highway to uh, protect any view from any headlights or anything shining through and causing difficulties. And here we have the different landscape material. And this is a general uh, floor plan of the building. We have administration at the front in the middle. We have uh, the younger children at the bottom of the plan that have direct exterior exits. The uh, lar two larger classrooms in the upper right-hand corner are large enough. They are required to have two exits, and thus they do. And then um, we also have the exit at the end of the corridor to the left that goes out to the, the play areas that uh, it's all a controlled access to the, uh, the play area. This is a playground area. We do have some uh, shade structures over the, some of the play areas. The largest play structure is entirely over the largest, or the largest shade structure is over the largest play structure on the site that, uh, as I believe might be mentioned by uh, the planning department will mention that we're looking for the variance for the height of that. Um, and then also the location in front yards, which they'll discuss. And I believe at this point, we're up to uh, the uh, guidepost Montessori portion of the presentation, uh, which identifies some of the tuition rates. I don't know if you I, have anything. I promised oh. Scott I'd do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he can answer the questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we were asked, Sam Hubbard asked us to include in this, um, and Scott pulled these numbers together, include uh, the tuition rates at this location. Um, as you can see, the, they gave, you know, if you sign up at the very beginning, there's an inaugural rate, but they, they gave their general list price, and, and the care for infants and toddlers is a much higher monthly cost than the children and children's house. I don't know if that's 
right? Yeah. And elementary school. So that's like uh, first through sixth grade, then that area. So um, if you have any questions, they just wanted us to be certain that uh, that was up for you all to know. Um, and these are just, these are other guideposts, Montessori. We've put up several in the Chicago metropolitan area for them. And they're, they're really beautiful, beautiful classrooms. Um, so now if you have any questions, oops, I guess I'll leave it on that. If you have any questions. Well, let's, I think we've got, I've got some questions and I think others do as well. But okay. let me turn it over to Mr. Perkins first and then we'll come back for questions. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'll just quickly go through the zoning actions. So this property, as you can see from Charles, get in your microphone a little bit. I don't if think you it's on. Can everybody hear me now? It's better. Okay. Um, so I'll uh, quickly go through some of the zoning actions uh, that are requested. Um, so as you can see on this exhibit, the B2 zoning is the front portion of the property, and then uh, the piece behind is zoned residential. So in the B2 district, uh, daycare is allowed as a special use, but it's not allowed at all in the R R3 district. Um, and then uh, the school portion for the elementary school is not allowed in the B2 district, but it is allowed in the R3 districts, which is where most of our um, schools are located. So uh, that's the reason why it flip-flops back and forth between a special use and a land use variation for those components between the two districts. Um, there are four variations that are requested. One is for a one-space parking variation. The other three deal with the accessory structures that are in the front yard of the uh, residential lot or exceed the height, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, the property, uh, as you're all aware, has been vacant for quite a few years. It was occupied by Windy City Sports for a very short period of time. Uh, was vacant, vacant before that, and then for many years it was uh, Plas Appliance. As you can see, it's almost 100% paved, um, so this will be a significant improvement, removing the parking area in, in the back and, and for reintroducing that for the play area. The uh, driveway apron on Kennecott at this location will be removed, and the parkway will be restored, so that'll be a nice um, improvement for, for the district, uh, for the neighborhood there. Uh, one of the earlier plans, uh, the petitioner did have parking off that, uh, off Kennecott that staff did not support. We felt it should all be contained with access from uh, Northwest Highway. Uh, the plan is to uh, change uh, to a one-way circulation uh, with the uh, entrance, uh, the kind of furthest northwest, and then the exit closest to the building. That allows for easier circulation. Um, while it is one way, uh, the drive aisle on the closest to the building is 22 feet. So in the event there were, you know, the odd period or two that w there was, um, you know, um, need for, for additional stacking, some stacking could occur and you could still circulate around the parking area. Um, this uh, shows the front yard and the building, uh, the residential home to the north. And so you can see that line indicating the front yard. Um, so the play structures in the front yard need a variation. Uh, the uh, larger play structure in the middle needs a height variation. In a, a typical residential lot, we have a maximum height of 15 feet. Uh, this would be closer to 17 feet. We also have a maximum size in a residential lot of no more than 300 square feet, and this will be around 800 square feet. Um, so staff supported those variation requests as well. The landscape plan that's in your packet does show some landscaping along the north property line. Uh, the petitioner showed in their exhibit that being removed. There's a fence that's on their property um, that uh, the neighbor to the north has asked that that fence remain in its location, even though it's set into the property a little bit. And the petitioner has agreed to that, and they will connect their fences uh, to that existing fence. Uh, it's, a, it's in very good shape, so um, that kind of addresses some of the concerns that the neighbor to the north had. And that just in, is, that's the area that was referenced. The other area, uh, the reason they need uh, the one space variation, initially they proposed this space, um, kind of uh, cut in between a landscape island. Uh, it's very awkward, you'd have to back into, uh, into the drive aisle on the corner. And so we asked that that be removed. And uh, the exhibit on the right shows that uh, space being removed and um, being restored as a landscape island. Uh, the traffic and parking study was uh, pretty in-depth. They looked at other 
um, uh, Montessori facilities that Guidepost owned, as, also, as well as the Institute of Traffic Engineers. The main um, area of traffic concern was uh, Kennecott and Northwest Highway that currently on the southbound leg operates at level of service F. So there's a delay of about 79 seconds with this uh, proposed plan that uh, level of F remains and the delay increases by about 20 seconds during the peak hours the rest of the day it functions uh, adequately. They also took a look at the exiting from the site itself and the exit uh, driveway uh, would have a level of service E so there'd be uh, delays up to about 40 seconds exiting the site um, but that uh, backup is self-contained on the, on the site itself. Um, so staff felt um, this was a good reuse of uh, the property. Uh, the board previously approved this as a daycare, a uh, smaller capacity at about 130, so that ordinance would need to be repealed. And uh, the plan commission uh, concurred with staff and, and voted uh, five to nothing to support and recommend approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Well, uh, could you come forward again and... Uh I've got a few questions, and then we'll go to the board as well. Should I, are they architectural? You can stay there for now. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, many years removed from needing daycare uh, for my children, and so I don't really understand all the options that are out there in our community or other communities or around the country, but I understand this is a relatively unique model mm -hmm. uh, that's not really prevalent in our community. Do we have anything like this at all, Charles? Uh, we used to. My kids went to the Montessori um, that is by used to be by the Sisters of Living World, and that closed a few years ago. So that is a similar was a similar model with daycare, and then had a couple of yeah. class elementary school classrooms. So this is the the standard Montessori model, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And sir, what's your name again? I'm Scott Huggy with Guide Post Montessori. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, just for my <coughs> education and maybe perhaps others as well, in terms of how this Montessori model operates, I don't really quite understand it. The tuition figures that you gave are strictly for the kids in the private school, or does that overlap into the daycare? I don't. How does that work? The private school is from <coughs> first through sixth grade. Yep. And the other daycare, so infants, toddlers. Our daycare, children's <coughs> house, I think, is daycare. Yep, it's all inclusive for the full day, that tuition pricing. All right, so I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So the, the kids who are in daycare are also going to the school? Yeah, I mean, that, that is Montessori education from infant through elementary school. All right, and so why I'm just confused then why you break down these numbers, 151 <coughs> daycare children, and 52 elementary children. Because the elementary school is a, an accredited elementary school that gives them, um, they're licensed by the state of Illinois, and they can move on into the public school mm. system or stay within a private school system thereafter. So they're licensed appropriately. Am I yeah. talking loud enough? Go ahead. Um, yeah, and just to add to that, the preschool, those are licensed differently than the elementary school, so that's why we have to break out the two different age groups. OK. Questions from the board, Trustee Scaletta. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I am now understanding that you guys are renting and you're not buying the property. Um, no. I think it's. We're purchasing the property. Oh. Guidepost Montessori is our tenant. Oh, so you're buying the property and then they're going to be your tenant. So who found who? We found each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a partnership. We've done almost 10 projects yeah, with you guys. Be yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, you know, when I first uh, started reading all the information about what you guys were doing, um, I wasn't sure whether I was happier that something was being done to the building or that more daycare was being brought to our village. Um, I guess I'm going with the daycare part because that's really what's impacting more people in our village than, uh, than, than that building. Um, the building does negatively impact that neighborhood the way it exists today. Um, it was an appliance store for many years, um, and even then, it uh, really wasn't uh, as well maintained as we might like. Um, and then um, after that, um, it just really never was kept in, in great repair. Um, and so the neighbors that live in that area have had to deal with that. And so I'm really happy 
to see that you guys are going to bring some life and some um, some money <laughs> to make that building look a little bit better so that the people that live in that neighborhood don't feel like they live next to an abandoned building. was really um, pleased to see that there's going to be more daycare. I think that's one of the things that um, I hear about quite a bit um, is that there, that people can't find um, daycare um, where they want it. I know some people who've literally had to go to Palatine to bring their kids to daycare because there's just not enough facilities in Arlington Heights. And um, while my child went to private daycare um, at, at the, at the uh, Lutheran home, um, they didn't have anything that then continued on. Um, most people then kind of went over to like uh, St. Peter's, which somewhat similar except for it's a full-blown school and um, they have a lot more space than um, just two classrooms. Um, but I, I commend you because there's a lot of people that are looking for something that is stable, consistent, um, and private. Um, and so I, I guess my comments to you is that, you know, you're not only going to be operating a business in town, but you're going to be a, a, a member of the community. And, you know, we are looking at issues that have to do with uh, traffic circulation. Um, and not everybody picks up their kids at the same time, and not everybody drops off their kids at the same time. But at the end of the day, you have to be a good neighbor. And so if something isn't working where all of a sudden everybody is showing up at the same time and, and traffic is backing up, then you got to figure out a new plan um, because your neighbors are the ones that we're going to hear from. And we want to make sure that that neighborhood um, is better than when you found it, not worse off. All right? And so we're going to hold you accountable to that. And so while I can read all these different reports and uh, I have my own opinion on traffic uh, reports, uh, I want it to be clear that if there's any problems where things are backing up or things aren't working as efficiently as one might want, um, that village staff um, will be contacting you, and I expect that you guys are going to do everything you can to be a good neighbor. Okay? Yep, yeah, I was about to say, we have a handbook that all families have to sign on to, and it does have directions on you know, parking and traffic and drop-off and pick-up, so we are very clear with all our families and our community to follow all those rules. Sure, and, and I think that that's gonna be important to let parents know what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. um, but they're utilizing that service because most of them are going to work. Um, and so you're gonna to have to figure out how to work around them, not have them work around you. Yep. Okay, all right. Um, welcome to the community. Um, I, I read everything. I mean, again, the plan commission did all the heavy lifting for us. Um, but I, I wanted to make sure that we that I was very clear in, in what the expectations are. Thank you, Mayor. Trustee Tenalia. Thanks, Mayor Harris. So were you were you were not involved, any of you, with the old Montessori school on Fernandez, right? And and um, that so that how long ago, Charles, did that stop? Would you say? Uh, probably three or f three or four years ago, and it was a little different model. It was a nonprofit uh, run by a you know volunteer board, and uh, I think their elementary school just went through um, kindergarten or first grade. It didn't go all the way through to sixth grade. Didn't go all the way to sixth grade. That was my elementary school. <laughs> it was a District Twenty Five school back then, a hundred and fifty years ago. Um, so. My office currently is just like two blocks from you guys on Northwest Highway there. And I remember when it was Plass, and I remember when it was the Raceway, and, it, and it's always had its share of, of um, visuals that were not all that appealing over there. And I think what you guys are going to do is going to really improve that. So everything I've seen, it's, it's just going to be a big improvement for that area, and I hope the neighbors benefit from that. You know, having some children around can be noisy at times, I'm sure, especially for the lady who's right next door. <laughs> but um, with, the, with the cars in and out, you know, uh, 
it, it could get cumbersome at times, right? You, but this is not your first rodeo. You've ten of these already, right? Can you tell us real briefly You're what global. other? What other communities locally are you in? Um, well, we just opened our 97th school in the country today. Um, but in the community, we've got around five or six schools in Chicago proper. And then we've got one Deerfield, Schaumburg. We've got two in Naperville. We're about to open up one in Downers Grove and Burr Ridge. And we've got one under construction in Kildeer. I think I got them all in okay. the area. So these are the ones that you're directly responsible for. Yeah. And I'm right. I'm directly responsible for schools across, across the globe, too. Well, you are? Yeah. Okay, so this is, your, this is your project all the way around. When there's an issue that goes on, you're at the top of the food chain. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we partner with um, Olympia on a lot of these, so I represent the tenant, and then they're obviously our landlord. Mm -hmm. But we've done so many of these together that we pretty much know how each other work. Mm -hmm. in this and, case. And, and everything that Trustee Scaletta mentioned before, I think every one of us up here at the, on the board feel the same way, that the neighborhood really comes first. We want you to succeed. We want you to have a wonderful business, and we want you to be good members of the community. But, you know, these people were here long before you guys are here, and they'll be here long after you're gone as, as things are. So it's, it's good to make sure that you heed that advice and, and do all that you can to keep things in a nice way. Process. We reached out, well, we sent out the signs and we had a community meeting, which Carol attended. Um, and, uh, you know, we did all of that. And we've had neighbors be very supportive of us. Some of them are here today and ask a lot of questions, which is good. Our uh, neighbor to the northwest, the motorcycle, motors, motorsports, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Mitch. Um, had to have discussions with Mitch. Um, he also owns the residence that is on um, just north of his his store so he purchased a residence there which is kind of behind carol's uh, behind mm -hmm. so yes. they've asked questions gotcha. of us we tried to you know make sure they understood mm -hmm. address their concerns um and worked out you know worked out carol's garden to leave it where it was so you know so she could have what she needed there so she providing the fruits and vegetables for lunchtime i hope so <laughs> <laughs> well it's again it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you guys are investing in the community. It's important that you become a good community member, even after the construction is done. And for those residents in that area, how long do you think your construction process is going to – when will it start and when will you end? Um, the start won't occur until IDOT gets full approval. To We have to get a sidewalk permit from IDOT. Um, and until we get that permit, we've applied for their um, temporary review right after the planning commission meeting. So we sent them the traffic report and we sent them the civil site plan. Um, Can I interrupt once you they for give a second? Us a, it's an 85% okie dokie. Uh, we have to go in with full IDOT approval. Unfortunately, given staffing right now, we've been told it could take six to eight months. Without IDOT approval, I, you know, telling me that site plan unaltered, um, not taking away more parking spaces, not taking away landscaping. Until that happens, I can't start construction. Uh, let me ask a question to Charles here. What's the IDOT adjustment that has to happen? Because there are access off of Northwest Highway already. So what, what does IDOT have to say about that? What, what, what's the question mark? Um, I think uh, engineering identified some changes that need to be made to the sidewalk, and there might be some... You know, minor driveway modifications. So anything within the IDOT rights way does require IDOT approval, and uh, they do take a long, long time. You know, but aren't so there? I, you know, I I can reach back out to engineering and find out. You know, if there's if it can be phased or. But there is a risk if, you know, IDOT could potentially deny the one-way circulation, for example. So I think that's the concern that the petitioner has. The, the, but the parking lot right now is double-loaded perpendicular parking with two accesses in there right now, correct? It, there's two uh, access points, correct? And it's, and it's perpendicular all the way across, it, right? It's, uh, yeah, 90 degrees, but it, it has to change because of the addition to the building that they're doing on the northwest side. That piece where the, where the um, play area is there? Yes. The west corner of it? Yeah, this, yeah. this area here. Yeah, there. So you can see, um, 
you know, from this, the, the addition comes out into this area. Yeah, but that's just, this aggravates me. I'm sorry. It aggravates me to know that we're going to be holding, we're going to have to have this petitioner sit and wait for six or eight months. And this is nothing you can do. Don't, don't take this the wrong way. This is not a staff issue. But we have two accesses off of Northwest Highway that are in virtually the right spot where they belong for this project to move forward. What's happening is we're changing the striping and we're losing where those handicap stalls are over there so that the traffic flow can be correct. And, and this is something I do day in and day out for, for uh, clients every day. I wonder, can you guys get together and figure out a way to work with these exact driveway entrances to not have You're to not go through. You're not changing Ida. the driveway entrances. They're the same. It's just one-way traffic. That's all that's changed. So those entrances, we have not changed them. I won't change the apron and or the entrance. All I have to do, and it's a requirement from uh, the plan, com plan committee, but it's also because IDOT wants sidewalks of a certain, when you replace a sidewalk, and we're required to replace it to IDOT specifications. Mm, sure, they have their rules on it, sure. And that's what when you go for their permit. So would we go and spend millions of dollars and then not have a site plan that's appro of approved not. by the, you know, that's not going to work. So, you know, I, I would tell you we're, we had to renegotiate our lease with um, Higher Ground because, Guidepost Montessori, um, because uh, we were anticipating getting them open like we wanted to really move this and get them open in September, October, uh, outside date December, depending on you know mm. what's happening. And I have uh, construction plans virtually 85 percent done to go for bid for both the architects and the civil engineers. But I had to call a halt until we found that IDOT would give that approval. Yeah, you know, it's it's shameful. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry to be going on about this, but this is this is. To me, that's unacceptable, and there should be a way to work with this the way it is. The sidewalk's already there. The curb cuts are already there. There's there's always more than one way to skin a cat. And in this case, I'm going to challenge you to figure it out. And if you can't, been, then you get to wait your eight months. We've had, we've that's had fine. months to that's go fine. with it's this. Your, it's your, to your heads. situation. Yeah, no, I talked with the traffic consultant. That's talked with the civils. It's It's... Right. It is what it is. I have no other points other than to wish you the best of luck and welcome to the community. Thank you. All right. All right. Trustee Labads. Thank you. Thank you also. I um, concur with my fellow trustees welcoming you to the community. Um, that building certainly uh, needs a lot of work. I won't go into any of the other stuff that was brought up already, but I did spend a lot of time. Oh. Took a walk over there yesterday, walked around the building, met with Mrs. Thies, uh, Thiesfeld, uh, for quite a while we had a very nice chat and um, I am thrilled when neighbors are so invested in something and take the time to learn about it and also thrilled that a petitioner is also willing to work with the neighbors so that there is compromise and, and t you all everybody can hopefully be happy at the end of the day. Um, I have a few questions one of it uh, has to do with the drainage. I just want to make sure I understand. Um, there is the the curbing on the north side, uh, and then there's the drain. I guess it's combined sewer, sewer manhole drain cover. There. Manhole yeah, cover. It, it, will that remain, or how is manhole cover will remain, and it's shown on the civils. Um, Carol mentioned that this was her concern uh, before the meeting, and we will take out that concrete. Um, uh, Call it a curb, uh, and and Tom probably is better at addressing this. But um, as we explained to Carol, when the civil engineer does their plan, everything has to get to that manhole cover, and not flush over into her property or anything else. It's and there is a maintenance agreement that the village has you sign. If you don't keep that maintained, they'll do it and charge you back for it. So, you know, we totally have that on our list of things, just like we have, you know, the, the uh, materials that are in the playground area have to be compact mm -hmm. and not fly away, and we have that on a maintenance contract because that's an ADA requirement, so Spe we understand. Speaking of those materials, they're, they're uh, pervious so that 
there's some seepage into the ground. So rather than concrete everywhere right. or asphalt everywhere like it is now, right. there will be some exactly. space like that. So, okay, that's good to know. Um, also, as I was talking with Carol, um, she was pointing out the utility poles in the back. Is that what's the status of that is there anything that comed has a utility easement that pole is theirs mm. and you know we can't really do battle with them i don't know what i wasn't sure what your objection was to it it is it's been there forever and it's <laughs> there it's not you know in our it's just outside our property right it's on yeah. easement on it it's kind of cradles. behind the building right about uh where you have the vertical oh, white yeah, line there it is. You can see the two it. parts in the back of the building there. Uh, so it's right there, and we don't expect that ComEd is going to be moving it, uh, but we don't have any control if they choose to move it for some reason. But uh, it doesn't interfere with what with your building, your no. addition, or the playground, or anything like that. The addition's like that. going Northwest. northwest. So. We designed around, around to make it. sure that it wasn't in the way. So. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I am familiar with the Montessori school uh, process through elementary. <coughs> Actually, my boss sent her child to a Montessori school in the city that went through eighth grade, so I'm pretty familiar with that. And actually, even here in Arlington Heights, one of the elementary schools, maybe more, at least the one my kids went to years ago, had the multi-age classes similarly styled at elementary um one of the, but one question that i i was wondering about is um physical education or recreation for the children because you do have the play area you've also got tether ball and it looks like you got a four, you're, you're planning for four square that sort of thing but um certainly in the schools they have you know often a more formalized sort of uh physical education how does that work in your, I mean, there doesn't seem to be space that for that here, and that's why I'm asking the question. Well, yeah, predominantly most of the physical education is going to happen in the playground when weather is permitting. Uh, when it's inclement weather outside, they, there are activities lined up inside the classrooms. There are, you know, bikes and um, we call them gross motor activities that are prepared for for the students in their classrooms. Even for the elementary, I'm specifically kind of focusing on the elementary age, the bigger kids, and I can see where there's room to play and all for the smaller children. Right. Um, well, predominantly, like, you know, we, we try and have them outside to do their physical, you know, activities. Obviously, when it's rain, that we have to do something inside, um, whether there's, you know, various activities they can do in, on, inside in the classroom, but for the most part, it's focused on the outside for them. So you ha but you have a set program in your curriculum that includes physical education yeah, of yes, some we do. kind as the public schools would. Yep, we okay. do. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at yeah. and understand. Mm -hmm. Cuz it is not like there's a playground where you go kick a ball around, you know, set up. Well, I suppose you could, but I can't see soccer playing, you know, being played in the little space. But that's just me. Well, yeah, I mean, one thing just to clarify is we've got the playground separated into three, you know, age groups. We've got toddler, preschool, and elementary school. One thing we do is with the elementary school playground, obviously it's small, but the elementary sc school children can use the preschool playground. It can't go the other way. So, that's, <laughs> so that does open up a lot more space for them to get their physical education. Okay. All right. Thank you. That I, I didn't understand that. So thank you. Um, the, 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 you've already talked about the, my question about the time frame, and then I, um, you know, there's the other businesses that currently park on that lot. I imagine they are aware that they're not going to be able to use the property. They got the notices, yes. The seller, um, I, I explained this to Carol, the seller is the, holds the leases with those folks. So until he's sure we're going to purchase, he's not going to cancel those leases. So sure. and they're happy to use the space. They're using, um, in fact, I was by there tonight on my way here, and, and there's so many cars parked in that lot right now. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, those are the questions that, I've ha that I have that had already been answered. So thank you. And also, like the others, welcome to the community. When you get when you're able to get here. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Canty. 
So I, I echo my colleagues' thoughts. Thank you for uh, coming here, for investing in Arlington Heights. I am not that far removed from child care, and I have taken full advantage of many of the different uh, centers that we have here. I'm familiar with the Montessori model. My aunt is a Montessori teacher uh, down in, in North Carolina. Um, one thing I do think would be helpful for the community who may have uh, not seen this in the materials is when does your center open from day from the morning into the evening? It's critical for parents. Yeah, it's seven. Yeah, we open at seven in the morning and then we close at six. Yep. Okay. And then for families that want to take advantage of your Montessori program, but then send their children to uh, maybe one of the public schools, is there a busing option? Some of the centers around town offer that busing option. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Bertucci. I just, I just want to uh, be clear on the pl players and everybody that's involved here. So, Diane, you work for the company that is developing the property or, and the own will own it. That will own it and we'll develop it. it. Right. Okay. And purchase it. Okay. And so. lease to Higher Ground Education, which their subsidiary is Guidepost Montessori. So, Higher Ground is the parent company. Guidepost is the what their DBA is, so to speak. Yeah, it's the brand. The brand in the series. And your name is? My name is Scott Heggy. Scott Heggy. Okay. And then the other gentleman, you're a, the architect. I'm the architect, Tom Seaver. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I was just getting some clarification because I was reading the notes and all the committee, other committee uh, um, minutes, and I just wanted to get some clarification. Scott, I don't think you were involved in any of the committee meetings or the commission meetings? Yeah, I've been to the planning committee and I was at the community meeting too. Okay. Community meeting, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he hasn't presented. He answered a few questions. Okay. Uh, they had the head of marketing who's elsewhere tonight um, for this area, this region, answer some questions at planning okay. commission. Okay. So are, so are you, Scott, are you corporate or are you involved? In, are, you, are you a teacher, licensed teacher? I'm corporate. I'm a construction and development manager. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Diane. Anything further from the board? All right. We do have two blue cards from the audience. And first is Carol. Please fell. Uh, come forward, Carol. And just the uh, audience is reminded that you do have three minutes. I know that. Speak. Well, All right, thanks. Sam told me. Uh, Carol Thiesfeld, I live right next door, north. Okay, they took care of the utility pole. Um, can somebody put this picture back up of the old building? I don't. You have this. How do I do that? Char uh, Charles, can you do well, that? How do I just. Oh, oh. Well, hold on. Oh, boy. The old <laughs> building. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, not doing anything. Okay. He's doing it. Oh, well, go back. Okay. Now, where the utility pole is that's supposed to stay, by what we know so far, uh -huh. that other pole just to the right, which I think is an electric pole from the building, that tall one, is that one going to have to stay also? That will, we have to re rework that. Okay. The electrical service for the... Okay. New electrical service will move further down where the addition will be. Okay, that took care of that question. All right, and then the fencing on the um, um, landscape plan. Uh, I'm glad to see the fencing the way it was discussed uh, when I talked with Sam. And then there, you've got this buffer zone between the fence along my property line, which is right technically on their side, but... Um, I'm maintaining it, and the agreement came with them that I would. And then there's this buffer zone, and then I'm figuring they're putting another new fence in uh, after the buffer zone. Yeah. You're going to have to come forward, sir. Tom? Okay, just my fence. All right, that Sieber, took care of you're that. You have to come forward if you're going to speak. Okay. I said there, so only fence on the north side will be the existing the fence. fence. Okay, the mine is the back fence. Yeah, and that's the only fence okay. on that line is your fence. Okay, and then you're going to put the fence on the other side. Right. It's that's going to have to go up to the telephone, the other pole. Yeah, we're relocating that fence because that existing fence is on the adjacent property. Property private. Yeah, I knew so that. we're bringing that. That actually apparently was his fence that was on our property, but we're replacing it with our fence on our property. Okay. So. Okay, all right. All right, that took care of that question. My third one is the... And this, um, the owner of um, 
Motorsports asked me to mention it also, is the where the garbage cans are going. Uh, and I know it's going to be closed in, and they're showing four um, what you call our regular garbage bins, like we put out in the street, instead I'll, of... I'll click to the right spot. Okay, you click to the right spot for me. Uh, instead of um, trash cans or garbage bins. And so the four of them, my concern is if they're at maximum number of students and teachers, you've got 203 students and approximately 30 staff, and they're feeding them their lunches and two snacks and all the other stuff and the staff's food, how often, the concern was, how often are they going to have to have those four garbage bins emptied and what time are they emptying them? So we don't have to listen to garbage trucks at four or five in the morning before the kids come at seven o'clock. And that was a big concern for I don't believe it's legal for them to do the garbage pickup that early in the morning. I, don't, I, I know I didn't think so because by us they can't pick it up till after seven thirty. Right, exactly. Uh, but they can't do it at seven thirty with all the traffic coming in. <laughs> so uh, my concern was just the timeline to do that, and those were my three big concerns. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we have a whole facilities team that coordinates all that. You know, just okay. obviously at the very beginning when our role that's, you know, not where it's peaking at that point, we don't meet, need as many garbage pickups, but okay. as we need more, we'll, we'll get more pickups. And okay. Do you see a need to extend that garbage area? No, no, we'll just increase the number of pickups. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all. And thank you. Did you have any questions for me, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so. very Thanks, much. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> all right, we have one other blue card. That's Jim Winkleman. Jim? Yes, I'm Jim Winkleman. Um, I don't have any concerns at this time. I've reviewed all the plans on, online, all that stuff. <clears throat> and, um, I've been a neighbor for, I've been there for 48 years, so I've looked at the back of this building for 48 ugly years. So this is a godsend to me and my wife. So uh, we were looking forward to have this done, and I hope you vote favorably for it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Winkler. Hey. Anyone else in the audience wish to address the board on this agenda item? Seeing none, I'll come back to the board for a motion. <laughs> I would, I, would move to, I would move to concur with the plan commission's recommendation. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee um, Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Schwingbeck. Any further questions or comments from the board or from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Hopefully you get to begin sooner rather than later. Right. right. <laughs> Welcome to the community. We do have one other item under new business, and um, that is the liquor code modification for earlier Sunday liquor sales proposal. Ms. McCoola, are you, Diana, you're presenting on this? Sure am. Okay, so um, we're gonna be talking with the board tonight about uh, consideration for changing the Sunday liquor sales um, for liquor license holders. So just by way of background, um, we are looking for some good discussion from the board about changing the code for earlier sales on Sundays. Over the past few years, we've had multiple um, requests from breakfast and lunch establishments looking for earlier uh, liquor sales on Sundays. And these establishments typically generate most of their business um, breakfast and lunch and close early afternoon, and they're rarely open or none of them are open for dinner. So currently, by way of additional background, the village has three liquor license classifications that allow um, liquor, liquor sales to begin at 8 a.m. Monday through Saturday. However, on Sundays, the earliest that an establishment can sell liquor is either at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., depending on the liquor classification. So various businesses I mentioned earlier have inquired, and just some of the uh, restaurants that have inquired are Scratchboard Kitchen, Egg Harbor Cafe, Honey Jam Cafe, Hey Nani, and a couple other establishments in North Point Shopping Center. So Egg Harbor gave us some testimonials that um, 
Sunday uh, represents 24% of their weekly sales. They are open at 7 a.m. and they close at 3 a.m. They also provided information that they have a total of 16 Egg Harbor cafes in the Chicago area, and 11 of those do not have any restrictions within their hours of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So they would prefer a 7 a.m. start if the village was willing, but it's definitely better than the, their current 11 a.m. restriction. Scratchboard Kitchen is asking um, for the village to uh, consider Sunday sale hours at 8 a.m. So they indicated that this would greatly benefit their customers. Their cu customers have been asking for earlier sales. They believe they could be more marketable as well as um, address uh, special event requests and uh, various different celebrations. So this survey um, was conducted just a few weeks ago, and I looked at 21 municipalities that provided their response. We made sure to at the bottom portion to um, show you the start times for some of our neighbors. And this shows you that out of the 21 municipalities that responded, 10 have a start time earlier than 8 a.m., 2 have a 8 a.m. start time, and 9 have a start time later than 8 a.m., there was one that said that they sell at any time. It was a little bit of an outlier, so I wasn't quite sure how to capture that one. But at least uh, 10 have a start time earlier <laughs> than 8 a.m. Showing uh, this is our current municipal code. Those that are highlighted in yellow are the restaurant classifications. It's the A, the double A, and the E. And you can see that um, the A's um, can start selling at 11 a.m. on Sundays the A's um, at 10 a.m. and the E's at 11 a.m. And then just for reference point, we can touch upon a little bit later, I also highlighted um, in blue uh, other classifications that do have a restaurant. Those are the C's, the Veterans Places. Um, the double D's are the bowling alleys. And the, um, the H is the uh, dining facilities. And those have also different start times on Sundays. So staff rec the staff recommendation is that we believe that an 8 a.m. request is, is a reasonable request. We believe at a minimum that is something that we could accomplish. Um, and we think it would be appreciated by the restaurants that have been asking. It would be consistent then Monday uh, through Saturday. We already have an 8 a.m. start, so it would be consistent for the whole week to say that everybody can start selling at 8 a.m. Certainly if the board wanted to look at uh, different start times, we can have that conversation. Um, and then I did notice uh, note that there are different <laughs> classifications for the bowling alleys, the senior housing, and um, the veteran non for profits that do have odd start times as well. So at a minimum, we believe that um, the class A, double A's, and E's should have an 8 a.m. start time. And then if the board wants to consider adjustments to the other ones, we can do so as well. So we're looking for direction and some conversation from the board as to whether or not there's a consensus to modify the liquor code to an 8 a.m. Uh, start on Sundays uh, for various classification. And then once the board makes a recommendation, we'll go ahead and prepare an ordinance uh, for the board to vote on at a future board meeting. Thanks, Diana. Um, I have no objection to the staff recommendation of 8 o'clock. I think 7 o'clock a.m. is too early for me personally on Sundays. Uh, one question that I did have, though, before I go to the board is uh, these other classifications that you mentioned that are in, highlighted in blue, uh, have they requested some change in their hours? I know we've got the request from the restaurants, but have these anyone in these other classifications requested a change? They have not. Okay. All right, Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, over the years we've been talking about changes and, and we've made changes to the liquor licenses you know and I, and I think it's kind of an evolution that we're seeing um, when, when I was first elected to the board in 2007 um, there were only a couple of um, breakfast and lunch restaurants in our village at all and and not only are there many more um, several of them have liquor licenses where previously none of them had a liquor license and I look at it with, you know, what is the difference between, you know, Monday through Saturday and Sunday? Um, this isn't stopping anything other than um, it's, it's setting up our businesses and, and other um, facilities as uh, an unlevel playing field. 
And I think that the best way to level the playing field is to allow these um, these businesses and organizations um, to have the same time frame that we have Monday through Thursday. Um, instead of being Monday through Thursday, it would be Sunday through Thursday. And so I, I just think that it makes the most sense. Um, you know, I, I've never um, been to a restaurant in the morning where I've seen someone out of hand. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, people go to brunch on a Sunday um, and generally um, people might be meeting with friends or celebrating um, a birthday or celebrating a baptism or, or celebrating something and all they want is, you know, to be able to share a mimosa with somebody or, or have a Bloody Mary and I don't think that there's, you know, that it's asking too much that we um, um, permit people to be able to enjoy an alcoholic beverage on a Sunday morning as they would legally be able to do on a Saturday morning or a Friday morning or a Thursday morning. Um, so I'm, I'm completely supportive of this. As, as you know, Diane, I've been kind of pushing you to uh, move this one along um, because many people are impacted by this. And it's very challenging because we keep loading your plate up with uh, many special projects. But uh, this was an important one, and I'm glad that you brought it forward. And I appreciate all the details that you provided to us. Um, I don't think we need to be an anytime community. Um, but we definitely need to be an 8 a.m. community on Sundays. Thank you. Trustee Tenalia. Thanks, Mayor Hayes. I, I, I'm trying to remember, when did we discuss this? It's been a, several years this came up, and it was a question, and for whatever reason back then it was not acceptable. Do you, do you guys recall at all when it was? I don't. I, I, I'm, I, I remember we've had some discussions. Um, <laughs> When Hey Nani came um, to to op operate here, they inquired about earlier start time on Sundays because of their jazz brunch. When Scratchboard Kitchen applied for their liquor license, they also inquired about it. And then prior to that, we've had some discussions. Um, the Saturday sales we did, we changed that, I believe. I remember it. It was years ago. It was way before Scratchboard, and it was before Hey Nani. But for whatever reason, it it just didn't didn't take off the ground and, and fly and and I'm glad it is here again now so thank you Diana for doing it. and if John if you were behind it I'm really thankful that it's happening people but <laughs> I said it was a lot of people okay um, to me it makes more sense that we allow the people who live in our town to spend their money in our town not have to go to a neighboring town just to have a nice brunch with a mimosa or a Bloody Mary so I'm all in for that and I don't know what else there is to say but Let's get it done. Okay, Trustee Grassy. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I moved here from Wisconsin. I remember being quite surprised that I wasn't able and that the, to have a Bloody Mary with brunch or that uh, we were able not able to purchase alcohol on a Sunday morning. Um, I just wanted to mention that I, I fully support the change in hours. I agree with my, my colleagues. I fully support the change in hours for Sunday liquor sales in Arlington Heights as a way to best support our businesses and restaurants um, and be more aligned with our surrounding communities. Uh, one thing I guess I wanted to mention as we're beginning this conversation is, you know, we each kind of come to, to decision making here a little differently. And I'm new on the board. I've really been enjoying this whole process. But part of how I appreciate doing things is, is putting a motion in place first. Not that that is, is to be set in stone, but I believe that sets a framework for conversation. And for me, a motion being made uh, says this conversation, I'm suggesting this conversation. And if somebody chooses to second it, what it's saying is I believe this conversation is worth discussing further. And the beauty of that is it really focuses on what we want this to be like for our community. And it allows us to amend and change the, the motion to really fit with what works best for our community. So if I would like to, to suggest for conversation a motion, it sounds like we, we are in, in, in some agreement here. And I move to modify the Arlington Heights Municipal Code section 13503 in this page six to it, if we can keep that page six, uh, please, to adjust the second column to read Sunday through Thursday and make all sales start time 8 a.m. and then completely remove the Sunday column from the code. Second. So does that make sense what I'm saying to do? I have, I have that printed out. So again, I'm moving to adjust the second column, Monday through Thursday, to read Sunday through Thursday and make all sales start time 8 a.m. 
and then remove the Sunday column from the code. So there's a motion by Trustee uh, Grassy, seconded by Trustee Canty, just for a clarification. So that would be for all categories, is what you're suggesting. That's the beginning right? of conversation, yes. Right, for, for all categories on the left side on class of license, Mr. Hartman. Uh, if I may. Mr. Passman, I did it again. <laughs> Sorry about that, Hart. No problem, no problem. If, if I may, um, I think I understand. I think, Trustee Grassi, what you're suggesting is, is to direct staff to prepare the ordinance. Yes, yes, that do that. yes. You cannot, you do not have an ordinance before you tonight, so you can't take final action on this. But you can direct staff to prepare an ordinance. And so that's what I'm moving to. This. I want Thank to you. clarify that was your intent. Thank you. So yes. thank, that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Trustee Bertucci. So um, to just get clarification, so what I'm going to do is I want to drill down on, on this, Diana. Um, so I see a few 8 o'clocks already um, for hotels, banquets, um, that type of thing. So can you give me some history as to how those came to be you know I don't have the history okay. they were set in place prior to when I started okay okay so so with, <coughs> with that being said is we are I mean I guess what I'm trying to say is we're kind of all over the place yes so <laughs> um but I do need to point out a couple of, of key things here yeah the Sunday column has um is very important for the end time closing time because the double A's can be open until 1 a.m on Sundays, but the A's have to close at midnight. And then the rest of them still matter, depending on what classification you have. So an 8 a.m. start time for all of the classifications is easier. To adjust the evening hours is a, is a different type of an analysis. Okay. So I don't, before I um, ask and, any... You know, and there's, in you know, um, something that I want to make sure that the board still wants to do is, is this with food sale, f sales w at restaurants because um, a salon, which is a class O, um, the board recently created that classification and determined that the hours are 10 a.m. to midnight. They have no food. Um, a brewery, that is something that we don't, it's created. I think we're going to have to adjust that along the way, but that was created a few years ago. Um, class L is a second floor establishment. We have one of those. Um, you can see the hours there. That's a 10 a.m. A coffee shop was created. We don't have anybody that took us up on that classification, but that was really unique to the board for a 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wine cafe, we don't have anybody that has that. So just to, that's, that's kind of where I was going as I was starting to, to yeah. pick and choose here is I wanted you to be able to drill down. So um, I, you know, although I, in, in spirit agree with trustee Grassi's, um, I, I think that we might need to let staff kind of redefine where we're going, but an eight o'clock start possibly for many of them, and then give us reasons why, and, you know, and some information as to why you wouldn't want, or why you don't think it, one of these types of licenses shouldn't start at eight. I mean, in spirit, I, I think I get what Trustee Grassy is saying in spirit, but just there's so many categories here. I'm almost inquisitive to why some of them have certain hours. And like you say, you've got a salon here, you've got a this, you've got a that. Um, and um, uh, I, you know, I, but come, you know, after you guys look at it and take it into consideration, if you came back and said everybody start at eight. Um, you know, that, that's not so terrible either. I think we all know that the history of some of this goes back to probably um, the end of Prohibition when basically the federal government moved the, to the cities and counties and states to decide, you know, if you were dry or not. And if you weren't dry, when, what your hours would be. And then I think some of this, at least from my understanding of history, and I'm not saying that I know for sure, was, you know, the Sunday thing came to, you know, no alcohol till after church, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, so I think what we need to do is, I'll, I'm in favor of this, but I would almost like to give staff one more shot at telling us why somebody shouldn't start at eight. Um, but if staff came back, back and said everybody at eight, I, I, you know, I would support that. I share the same concerns, Trustee Bertucci, because I just don't think one size fits all for all these different classifications. So that's that would be my concern with this motion. Trustee Canty. Yeah, so I, 
I am in favor of the motion, and I'm uh, part of that is because the vast majority of these licenses, Monday through Thursday, have an 8 a.m. start time, and their end times are, except in the case of breweries, are identical to their Sunday end times, right? So you only have two classifications that are not already 8 a.m. on a Monday, and that's coffee shops, which admittedly we have no one with that classification, and the other one is breweries. And we only recently uh, had a brewery get approved before us, and it's not yet open. Um, But I think we could all agree that we would want them to be able to take advantage of lunchtime hours uh, to make sure that their business can be successful. So from my perspective, I'm not really sure why there is such a difference between Sunday and Monday, particularly where the end times are the same and we're only impacting in that instance for the Monday column two licenses, two of which are not really in play at this time, right? And we can always come back to it at a later point if we find that it is an issue for breweries or if there is a coffee shop that for some reason does want to wait to open until 2 p.m. and start their liquor sales. Um, But to me, this makes it a little bit cleaner. And I would also add that I think this is a real opportunity for staff to go back and look at all these various types of liquor licenses and see if maybe we can clean some of this up, right? So when you're looking at like computer files and that kind of thing, think of your folder structure, right? When you're putting a, a document into the folder, are you going to have more than one of that document in that folder? Because if you're not, chances are you don't need a whole folder, for it, right? You can find a different place to store that document. And so I would encourage us to take this opportunity to look at all of these licenses and see which ones are we actually needing and can we put into play so that it makes it easier on staff and the businesses when they're applying for licenses in the future to know what do we actually need, right? I mean, this is supposed to be helpful to to them and also for us. And so anything that we can do to make this more efficient and easier for everybody to understand, I think, benefits us. Trustee Schwingback. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I, I was uh, Diana, you and I have been talking about this since probably January, and I was very um, excited tonight to just move forward with the 8 o'clock. Um, and I know we have a lot of places uh, in town that are going to be very excited about that. But I wanted to throw something out on the table. You put up a chart a little earlier uh, with all the neighboring communities. And uh, if you look down at the bottom, a lot of those neighboring communities uh, right around us are, um, you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. I don't know if this comes into play, but do we have any restaurants? I know I've been over to one on Wilkie and Campbell early in the morning. Um, I don't know if they have a, a liquor license, TNT. They do not. Okay, but do we have any uh, places that are opening prior to 8 a.m. where we want to move it maybe to to 7? Are we losing any business to some neighboring communities by restricting it to 8? So Egg Harbor did indicate they open at 7 a.m. and, mm-hmm. and they'd be happy and pleased to have a 7 a.m. start. Right. Yeah, I mean, if even, even um, you know, Monday, the, the whole week, if they're open at 7 a.m. and... Um, and we're, we're potentially going to lose some business, you know, where some guys want to get an early start, maybe go out to breakfast before golf, uh, have a Bloody Mary or a mimosa. Um, are we going to lose anything by not allowing them to serve when their restaurant opens in the morning? Just a thought I'd like to kick around. Well, you've also, just in response, you've also got Buffalo Grove and Mount Prospect, our neighboring communities a that don't later. open until 9. Right. Right. So, I mean, the eight to me is a good compromise. Trustee Labeds. Thank you. Um, I certainly am leaning towards the consistency of, of, of having these restaurants be able to serve starting at 8 a.m. Um, Trustee Scaletta said at the beginning of our conversation that, you know, um, Sunday through Thursday makes sense, and then Friday and Saturday would, could be, you know, different in terms of the, ending date not or time excuse me but not the beginning time um, or at least classified that way 
Um, but uh, Diana, can you refresh my memory? What is a double A adjunct besides being open later? Um, that is the pri That is the one that we have. We only have one of those. Oh, okay, okay. And it's just to allow that establishment yes. to serve later than any of the others. Right. They have a three a.m. Okay. Um, so I'm st I am actually still fine with the 8 a.m. I mean, even though Egg Harbor indicated they would like a little bit earlier, um, they said they were also willing to go with 8 a.m. Since we've been at 8 a.m. for years and years and years on the other days of the week for the restaurant, so that's what I am. And it's what I, I, I'm comfortable with that. Um, but I do see some value in looking over some of these other categories and what changes might need to be made to them. So, and I remember when we did the coffee shop thing, that was for Starbucks uh, years ago, that I don't know if they ever started serving. No, they did not. So anyway, so that's kind of where I am, if that helps. Ms. McCulla. So um, I feel like we could probably knock out a lot of this tonight in about five minutes if, if the board will just let me have a little bit more discussion. So I feel that we can adjust the Sunday hours easily. If, if there's an agreement, if there's a consensus at 8 a.m., we can go through it and adjust the 8 a.m. start times, leave the end times the way they are. And the really the only two outliers are the coffee shops. We don't have anybody that's applied for that. We can address it when the time comes. We don't have anybody that has a wine cafe, although we've had a couple attempts. It's never happened. And then really it's the brewery, and I think that one hopefully is coming a little bit down the road, and I think we're going to have to have some additional discussion with that. So if all of them can be um, adjusted, um, I think at 8 a.m., if the board's okay with it, um, the only one would be the salon license, but they can sell earlier during the day. I think if we let them sell at 8 a.m., I'm sorry, during the week they can sell at 8 a.m. and just let them sell on Sunday, it'll be consistent. So we either um, change everyone to 8 a.m. on Sundays or we just leave the breweries and the um, coffee shop alone for now and we can address it when the time comes before, before and bring it back to you. All right, other questions from the board? Trustee Baldino. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I came in here tonight thinking one way and at this point, I concur with Trustee Grassi, Trustee Canty, and uh, Diana McCullough. So I'm in favor of changing them to 8 a.m. Uh, across the board and making it simple and straightforward. Thank you. Trustee Bertucci? Yeah, I, I, and again, I, as I mentioned, uh, I'm good with the 8 a.m. start and um, particularly the spirit of it. I, I guess just to clarify, Diana, um, I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure that staff feels comfortable and moving along that um, that you it, I almost seem it almost seems like you weren't prepared to go all the way down the column um, and that you're concerned that there might be something there. So I am OK. And thank you for the question. I am OK with 8 a.m. Uh, except for the coffee shops, which actually are two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then the breweries, because they're not allowed to start till they have a little bit three to ten, three to ten or eleven to eleven p.m. So, those are the ones that are the oddballs to me. If we addressed all the other ones, we could move ahead and have an ordinance prepared for the board and, and let and, us kind of noodle this one a little bit more. Okay, because I'm, I'm and I'm guess I'm not clear with the brewery and the why. What would be the concern and? Sure. So when the board um, first created the brewery license a couple of years ago, this was um, it was before the board and this was the agreed to hours. And this was based upon the applicant's information submitted at that time. Mm -hmm. A couple of years have passed. The applicant came before the board, received approval. And I noticed in their material, updated material, that they have different hours that they would be seeking. So I think we're going to have to have a, a broader conversation. So what, um, you're, what you're saying is they're, they're not even going to be able to be open before. Is that what you're saying? Well, Don't right now they would be limited to uh, 3 to 10 Monday through Thursday and Fridays 11 to 11. Said. Remember, those right. were the operating hours that were actually supplied to us from the applicant. So at that time, that was their business model. I suspect it's changed. I've seen some of the updated material. So we have to have a broader discussion about modifying that. Could I add one 
comment, uh, if I may jump in. Those, yeah, go ahead, Charles. Uh, those, the big difference there that also uh, those two don't typically serve food. They don't have a kitchen, so that would be oh. okay. policy decision of the board, and I think that's why they're you know, earlier, I mean later um, starting hours. Yeah, and just, if you guys, if anyone can refresh my recollection on the brewery, didn't that have something to do with the neighborhood concerns and that they, they conceded to not opening earlier on some of these weekdays? I, I don't remember, to be honest with you. Yeah, some of the breweries, uh, the locations that they're allowed in the zoning ordinance could be um, adjacent to um, residential and maybe in areas that typically don't have that kind of um, use, whereas a restaurant is typically in more of a commercial area that everybody accepts would have that kind of use. And that might have been a condition of our approval at that time for the brewery was to limit their hours. Do you, does anybody remember? I think I'm remembering something like that. Yeah, and bed. I remember, as I remember, is that that's kind of how they wanted it. They weren't planning on starting even opening earlier than 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Correct. That's That's what I remember about that. Um, and I have a couple of other questions. Yeah, I, just, I just, Diana, I just want to make sure that we're not, uh, and Mr. Passman, <laughs> I want to just make sure we're not doing anything contrary to our condition of approval for this brewery if we change those hours. So, the only thing I would say is any entity that received any kind of zoning relief, brewery or otherwise, and that entity wants to sell liquor, they would be subject to the liquor license laws regardless of what's in the zoning approval. And I, I don't know off the top of my head how many this might apply to, but you have the authority in your liquor licensing capacity to determine the hours for each classification and determine the nature of each classification. So I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, but if we only approved it, the breweries, some people might have approved it based on the fact that they've limited their hours of operation that's correct. Liquor that's, or otherwise. That's a pol that's a, that, that is a, a valid policy question, but it's not a legal problem if you change your mind on it now. The breweries. A public input from the residents. It's a, it's a valid policy question. <laughs> I, I, I understand what you're saying, Mayor. But right, Trustee Labads. I, I was. Uh, I wanted to I, defer to Trustee Canty. I think she had some th some remembrances from back then. Uh, so I, I think you're right, uh, uh, Mayor. That there was an applicant who came before us and was willing to concede certain things in much the same way that Egg Harbor would prefer a start time of 7, but will accept a start time of 8 o'clock, even though that is not their preferred uh, their preferred start time. But I, I do want to caution us against drafting whole licenses around an applicant and their specific uh, needs, right? I, I think it's better from a policy perspective to design licenses that we think are appropriate for the for the community and then let an applicant come before us and request relief from a certain uh, type of license rather than coming up with all of these individual ones, right? Because if the if the comment is that a cafe or a brewery doesn't typically serve food and that's why they start later, well, I mean, technically Arlington Ale House doesn't serve food either and they have an earlier start time. And I don't have a problem with them having an earlier start time, but I am curious as to why we would consider them kitchenless and therefore they get special treatment, but these people are kitchenless and they get different and worse treatment, if that makes sense. I, I think, and I'm not saying we have to do that tonight, but that's why I'm saying it's an opportunity for staff to go back and look at these licenses and say, what do we actually need in this community to get what we want out of, out of these licenses? Hey, Trustee Labeds. Uh, and I had a couple of different questions. Um, Diana, so uh, should we go, you know, so when we go through this, the process and we make changes that we agree to, then the restaurants would be automatically um, changed to the new start time? Yes, correct. Once the, um, the board uh, sees the ordinance and approves the ordinance that they would be able to start at 8 a.m. Okay, so they don't have to come back for anything. And the liquor license costs would remain the same as Correct. they are today. Okay, thank you. Trustee Scaletta. Thank you. Um, I agree with a lot of what um, Trustee Canty said, but uh, then you threw in Arlington Ale House, which threw off your whole point of uh, let's not talk about a specific business, let's talk about the categories. No, I just meant it as an example, right? 
I, I just like we were all talking about that brewery have, as an example. Yeah, I don't think I, they should have their own either. I, I hear you. So I guess what I would want to do is, you know, I, I would amend the motion. And that's why I'm not a big fan of throwing the motions out right at the beginning because it becomes very confusing. But we're going to do this again. I would amend the motion to remove the two categories of coffee shop and brewery from the original motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion to amend the main motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Canty. Uh, questions or comments on the amendment, suggested amendment? Trustee Tenalia. So this is a little unusual for us, Mr. Hartsman. Um, <laughs> I think this is the first time in my 13 years, or nine years, excuse me, that we're making a motion to tell staff to do something. Because that's really all we're doing tonight. Mm -hmm. We're just giving you guys some direction like we do m most other evenings here. I mean, we're not drafting an ordinance here. We're, there's no language that's changing. We're just giving you guys a little bit of thought to go and prepare something for us to then vote on next time. Do I have this right? That's correct. Uh, is it, and the, the main motion, which we have the, now the motion to amend it, the main motion would be to direct staff to prepare an ordinance for final adoption. That ordinance, which would come back at a subsequent meeting, would formally and would formally amend the village's liquor regulations. But you're correct. Right now, all it is is a motion to provide that direction to us. Right, and 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 now it's just amended a little bit to remove a couple items out of it, and 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 so you guys will go do that, and then we'll talk about this again the next time. And if there's some tweaking that needs to be done at that time, we will. Correct. If the main motion is adopted, whether amended or not. We would prepare that ordinance, bring it back to you for further consideration. You would have the ability to um, adopt that ordinance at a later meeting or not. Or amend it. As, or, or, or right, further revise it, can it, whatever the board's pleasure. Okay. It, um, I get it. All right. Any other discussion on the amendment? Saying none, I'm going to go to the audience. Anyone in the audience wish to address the board on this item? I was just going to remind Melissa Kayer speaking. I was just going to remind you the breweries were going to encourage their patrons to order food from local restaurants and have it delivered at the brewery. All right, thank you. Anybody else in the audience wish to address the board? All right, seeing none, any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, um, there's a motion and a second to amend the main motion to eliminate. Go ahead and state, restate. Right, the so, the, so the, 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 the main motion would be, as, and, and I, I'm just going to. State this, you know, in, in in loose terms. The main motion would be to make the start time for all liquor license categories 8 a.m. Essentially, to turn that first that second column from Monday to Thursday to Sunday to Thursday. As I understand, the amendment would be to remove from that the Class M brewery and Class K coffee shop, so that if the amendment that would be the amendment, the amendment would change the main motion so that those two rows would not have any changes to their hours but okay. it's only the amendment you're only voting to uh, whether or not the main motion which you'll let vote on afterward should include 8 a.m for coffee shops and breweries or not okay uh, well again i agree that this is uh, something that is the subject of some discussion where we try to come to some consensus and so i i would prefer that we not make motions in situations like this because I think it behooves us, it makes it so complicated when we're making motions and we, we know there's going to be an amendment to it. And so I would prefer that we wait and discuss it and try to come to some consensus before we make a motion, but that's my preference. So we do have a, a motion and a second to amend the main motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. No. What was the vote? Let's take a roll call. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee... Canty? No. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. Trustee Grassi? I want to clarify, we are voting on the amendment, yes? Correct. No. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Baldino? No. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Bertucci? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. What's the vote? One, two. I have three. Six, three. Six to three. Okay, so the amendment passes. Now, we'll, uh, any further discussion on the main motion as amended? I do. Trustee Tenalia. So part of the original motion was to remove all of the Sunday column, yeah, yeah, if you right. recall. Is that something that is still... I, 
Help me out here. What, what I would say is I think we understand, again, since it's not final action, we understand that we'd have to preserve some form of that column. If this motion is approved, now as amended, we'd have to preserve some form of Sunday hours just for the Class K and Class M categories. And if you trust us to do so, we'll bring that back to you in a couple of weeks. And if we get it wrong, you'll tell us, I'm sure. <laughs> so, All right, Trustee Labeds. So just so I know, a yes vote is what and a no vote is what? A, 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 as I understand it, a vote to approve this main motion as amended would be to direct staff in our office to prepare an ordinance amending the village's liquor regulations to convert, basically to have a start time of 8 a.m. for all categories on Sunday except Class K and Class M for which there will not be a change to the Sunday hours at this time. Okay, thank you. And we're going to ignore the the comment about removing that we'll, we'll, fifth column. We'll, we'll figure out. We'll figure out the columns. Okay. Yeah. If, if, again, <laughs> that's, that's okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. Trustee Bertucci. Just, well, just one last comment. So therefore, the not only are you not going to remove it, but the finish times or the end times on Sunday will stay the way they are right now. Correct. Okay. Okay. I got it. There will be right. no. There will be no change to the Sunday hours for Class K or Class M in the draft we'll bring you if this motion is adopted. Got a motion and a second as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, you've got your direction. Thank you. Do. you. Thank you all. Thanks, Diana. All right, there is no other new business, so we'll move on to the report of the village manager. Ms. McCula? Nothing for this evening. Right, thank you. Thank you. Anything from the board under petitions and communication? All right, thank you all. Move uh, to adjourn. Second. second. Motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Baldino. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for joining us this evening. Diana, you missed.